And Trap Code Form has a really useful tab here called Audio React, short for Audio Reaction. And first things first, it asks you for the audio layer. We have our WAV file already imported, so I'm going to come down to cadbeer.wav, just the name of my track. Not really mine, but the one that I'm using. So I go to Reactor 1, and I know, for me personally in this song, and it's going to be completely different for you, because you're going to have a different song. But for me, it really comes in at about one second, to be honest. Let's see, like one second about there. I know that's kind of where it drops in. So I kind of want to have the camera, I know, down the line animate into about one second. So just to be safe, I'm going to go back to my particles layer. And I'm going to set this property here called time offset in terms of seconds. And I'm going to set that to zero point, just to be safe, a little bit before, 0 0.85 seconds. That means you'll see here that it remains and it doesn't do anything until 85 seconds where then it starts to react. Pretty cool. Anyway, moving on. I have my frequency. I'm going to be setting this to 1000. And my strength. I'm going to set this to something crazy like 5600. And lastly, you'll notice these don't actually do anything yet. All we have right now is the default flow, and uh, that's what's going on. So as soon as 0.85 seconds hits in around here, it's going to start to animate, but that type of animation is mapped over here. You'll see it says map to, and you have the disbursement, the sphere size, uh, opacity, particle size, or, you know, the one that we're going to be using, fractal. And this is really where we get the key digital effect. You'll see at the beginning of my animation, everything is flat, normal. My camera would be animating in about to here, I know. And as soon as it hits, bam, 0.85 seconds, it starts to animate, and it's reacting to the audio. You can't really tell right now because there's no audio playing, but it knows. It knows. So believe it or not, that actually takes care of the effect. Um, from this point on, if you know already how to do camera animations and you're pretty, you know, efficient in After Effects, you know how to handle keyframes and, you know, 3D rotations, etc., etc., then you can, by all means, call this tutorial complete. But for those of you who don't and, you know, just want to mess around with the animation and actually get this thing rolling, then, by all means, stick around. So what I'm going to do now is actually move on to the camera rotation. You'll notice here it's mapped to the null object. We did that at the very beginning. And it's very important that you have your null layer set to 3D. Remember, we did that. So I'm going to unhide my null layer. And since it's 3D, if I toggle it here, you'll see it gives you the X, Y, and Z rotations. So really, I know that I want to kind of start off at an angle. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to just pan out. But I know I'm going to be editing the position. And you can edit the position actually just by dragging the null object and the camera follows it. Or you can edit the rotation and it does just the same thing. Pretty neat in my opinion. And now that I notice it, I'm actually going to pull out, select my text layer, and I'm just going to pull it off the grid here a little bit so it's kind of just floating out in free space. And with that, now I'm going to zoom out to the distance that I want the animation to actually start at. I kind of want to start off to this side, maybe over here, and maybe a little more out in terms of distance. I'm going to set a keyframe now, right or left click actually, the stopwatch here for X, Y, and Z rotation, and let's get started. So I know I'm going to actually move up here. Remember when we had our time offset for the particles, for me it was at 0.85 seconds, for you, whenever you want the animation there, or the particles to start reacting, completely up to you. But I know for me it was at 0.85 seconds, so I'm going to start here with my position in place on the first frame. I'm going to edit the rotation. You know, just something like that. Actually going to leave off the Z rotation now just to be safe. You can toggle that on or off if you want, if you know what you're doing. And I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. Maybe adjust the position a little bit. This is the first frame that it's really going to be starting on the animation, so I kind of want it to be perspective-ish. Perspective-ish. Oops. And anyway, so that's the first frame. Now it's going to come up to where we said it was going to animate. I'm going to go exactly using page up and page down on my keyboard to this frame is where we have it. 
0.85 seconds. And I'm just going to set keyframes by left clicking these diamonds over here. Okay, so I think this is a good starting point. I think this is a good starting point. I might just maybe just the rotation a little bit. This is the first frame technically that it's going to start on. And now when I come up here, at this point, this is where my audio starts, and I'm, all I'm doing is animating at this point. So um, I'm going to reset the Y, or not reset it, I'm just going to set the values to zero. That's all I'm doing. And then for the position, I'm going to set it back to the default uh, values manually. Make sure not to reset the position, or it'll screw up your animation. But uh, yeah, so now it starts off on the first frame, and it comes in. Bam. And then we have the animation and such things. Now, this might not look crazy right now. All we're doing is just the camera rotation. But later at the end, once I have all my keyframes in place, I'm going to set them all to easy ease keyframes. And that's going to make the camera movements really smooth. And then I'm going to turn on the motion blur. But I'm leaving those things off right now just for the sake of, you know, simplicity and rendering speed. So I got this here, you know, whatever, bam, it hits. It's reacting to audio. Um, let's say I kind of wanted to pan off to the left a bit. So I'm really just going to come up here and drag my position where I want it. Position of my null object. And maybe come down here, a little bit down at an angle. And now I'm going to adjust my rotation where I want the camera to be looking. Done. Got people signing on and off instant messenger. Always cool. Yeah, it hits. Comes over here. You know, simple camera animations, just animating. So I'm going to go back now to the default. Animate from there. 640, 360, 0. In terms of the positioning, as well as resetting the rotations. And I'm doing it up here. Doing it up here. And now I'm just going to go off to the right side. Dun, dun, dun. Up. Oops. Selected it by accident. Went up on the y-axis, back out on the z-axis, a little in, and editing the rotation now where the camera's looking. You have it look up to the left. In fact, let's get like a closer shot just for the heck of it. Zoom on in. Bam. Kind of a little offset from the center, a little more down, very picky, very picky. Anyway, you pretty much get the gist of the idea. This is just simple animating. All I'm going to do now is come back to the end of the, my timeline, and I'm going to set the values back to absolute default, 640, 360, 0. And for the position, for the X rotation, I'm going to set it back to 0. Y rotation, again, I'm setting that back to 0. So now we're pretty much in the center of the document, just to check, yep, still aligned in the center, perfect. So only thing I'm going to be adjusting is the Z on the uh, position. kind of want it to be a little more zoomed out in terms of perspective, I want it to end right there. So let's check the animation, 